Beyonce Super Bowl halftime performance called Huge Controversy in White America. Her performance was called racist, a racist political statement all because she honors the Black Panthers. To make matters worse, they even compared the Black Panthers to the Ku Klux Klan, also known as the KKK. With that being said, I decided to inform you about the Black Panthers and what they really stood for. On Sanford.edu, the Black Pan it says that the Black Panthers was formed on October 1966 in Oakland, California by Huey Newton and Bobby Field. The Black Panther Party is known to be one of the largest revolutionary organizations that has ever existed. The reason was this group was formed was for self-defense, for minorities against police brutality, white violence, and even the U.S. government. They were trying to protect black, uh, black communities because the police clearly were not doing it. The Black Panther Party had 68 offices in different cities. Unlike Martin Luther King's nonviolent approach, they were rebellious and would use violence only if necessary. Yes, some of the members were confrontational, but majority focused on the social aspect of it. Their mission was not to hate and kill white people. The Black Panthers were not anti-white. Unlike the media perception of the Black Panthers, they did the things they did for the community, community outweighed the bad. They created programs in the community such as a breakfast program which fed children before they went to school, health clinics, youth institutes, SAFE, which is Seniors Against a Fearful Environment, People's Free Ambulance Service, Free Food Program, the Black Student, the Black Student Alliance, and the Black Panther newspaper. Many of you may question if they did all these good things in their community, why were they considered bad or a threat to America? I honestly do not know the answer myself, but in my opinion, I believe the government and the police force were scared because there were many African-American organizations during this time, but the Black Panthers were more organized and more political. That's why they were the main target. The government did everything in their power to get rid of the Black, Black Panthers. In the documentary, Some Truth About the Black Panthers, they stated the year of 1969 in Chicago, Illinois, the FBI had all these different tactics to get rid of the Black Panther Party. They even tried to turn, black, turn other black organizations against them. The FBI would send fake threat, threats to the Blackstone Rangers, also known as the Moles, like they sent letters to Jeff Ford, the original I guess, person that made it, which is a Chicago street gang in order to get them to turn against the Black Panthers, basically to start a war. The FBI would also recruit other African Americans, mostly ones who were convicted of petty crimes. So like, if you do this for me, your sentence will get lower or you won't have to go to jail or something. To go over, to go undercover and get initiated, they want them to go undercover, get initiated into the Black Panther Party and find dirt on them. In an interview with a man named William O'Neill, he had went like joyriding around the city in someone's so own car, so they had him go undercover. He was one of the FBI in informants. Talked about how the FBI used him to try to get dirt on the chairman of the Chicago chapter, Fred Hampton. William stated how there was no dirt he could find on him. All he knew that he was really for help in his community. The only thing William actually did help with was the killing of Fred Hampton. William gave the FBI an outline of Fred's house, not knowing the FBI was planning to kill Fred in a police raid. They shot and killed Fred Hampton and another party leader named Mark Clark. Furthermore, the police arrested four members that was in the house at the time of the party, including Fred's pregnant girlfriend, who were and charged them with assault and attempted murder. Although none of the members shot back at the police, Cook County State Attorney Edward Heron told the media this, and it's like hard for me to like understand what he said, but I'm gonna be quote from word for word. As soon as Sergeant Daniel Gross and officers James Davis, who were leading our band, announced to their office occupants of the apartment, attacked them with shotgun fire. Basically he's saying they shot at the police, that's why they shot at them. He also claimed the police told the members to come out the house with their hands up, but instead one of the members shouted, shoot it out. That didn't happen. Edward basically fed the press a bunch of BS, but no one really cared to believe the truth except for one man by the name of Brian Boyer. Brian Boyer was a Sun-Times newspaper reporter who took the time out to go and look inside the house of Fred Hampton to notice that all the bullet holes were going in one direction, which was pointed towards the house. What the police did was chaotic and unlawful. That was one of the main reasons the Black Panthers were created. Sadly, the Black, pa the Black Panthers did end. They ended in 1982 during the closing of the school that they founded because they found out Huey Newton, the originator of the Black Panthers, was stealing the school's <coughs> money for his drug addiction. 
Many think that being pro-black is racist. Just because someone is pro-black does not mean that they are anti-white. It's just a way of uplifting a race who has been torn down for many years. Just like how we would applaud a victim for finally standing up to a bully, we are so focused on the messenger, messengers and we forget to actually pay attention to the message. So before making false assumptions and ignorant comments about Beyonce's performance, the Black Panthers and whoever else is pro-black, take the time out and actually do the research.